Mount Buller stands at some 1,800 metres above sea level. It's a drive of some three hours away from the city of Melbourne in Victoria. It's better known perhaps as a fine ski station, but in the summer, it becomes a great challenge for the international racing cyclist. Hello again, everybody. I'm Phil Higgins, and welcome to our second week's coverage of the summer of cycling. Now, if you saw our last programme, then we saw the flatter races around Port Phillip Bay. They were races for the thoroughbreds, the greyhounds of world cycling. They were flat courses. Well, the challenge now changes to the high mountains. Now, the international bike riders here, especially the Australians, are aiming for a place in the Olympic Games. It's the only chance the professional element of Australian cycling has to impress the selectors, because in February, they'll be moving across to join their international cycling teams. So let's first of all see how they feel of this challenge. I think last year we, we showed that we're a pretty strong team, the, the A-bomb Mount Buller team. Uh, you know, obviously we haven't got the strength we had last year, but uh, I think Paddy's in better shape than he was last year, and I think if it comes down to it, uh, I'll, I'll definitely ride for Paddy at the finish, but I think it's going to be between the VIS guys, the AIS guys, Hodgie and, and our guys. And today's climb is uh, about 16 kilometres, so it's a little bit longer than last week, but the form's pretty good at the moment, and um, hopefully I'll be near the front on the start of the climb. I think the main thing is to stay, stay in touch of, with the bunch and uh, no, not lose too much uh, towards Jamison and back. Who are the guys you're going to be looking out for? Um, I think primarily Patrick Jonker. I think there are a couple of the Germans who are very good climbers, um, among others. Uh, I was training here on the climb with Neil Stevens um, a couple of days ago, and I know he's not yet back to top form after being sick over Christmas, so um, I think probably Patrick's really been psyching up for, for this Mount Buller race. So how are you going to ride the race here? Um, hopefully try and get in a breakaway, just quietly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I've got the form on the climb this afternoon. This is the first time I've raced since the Criterium's in Perth, so... Um, I think it's just going to be a matter of uh, riding yourself into it. And there are just a few of the Australian professionals who feel they really must impress during the next two days of racing here in the Motorola Mount Bullock Cup. Now, I'm joined by Phil Anderson, without doubt Australia's finest ever professional racing cyclist. He rode the Tour de France 13 times. He finished every time. But more importantly, he lives not too far away from Mount Buller. He knows these roads very well. And for that reason, Phil, I suspect that's why you had a training camp up here for young and old alike before the two-day. Yes, I know the roads very well. And uh, there have been a lot of juniors, a lot of veterans. But it's the young blokes that have really impressed me. They've been setting their personal bests up this hill here, but also they've been uh, tossing it up with some of Australia's best pros. All right, well, it was a great week, and it culminated in the two-day race, the Motorola Mount Buller Cup. Two very different days, a long-distance road race, and then a race right here on the circuit on top of the mountain. Take us through the route of the 100-kilometre road race, Phil. Yes, well, day one begins at the bottom of Mount Buller, heading out away from the mountain, down towards Mansfield, just before Mansfield takes the Jamison turn. And uh, this is where they're going to have lots of crosswinds. It's known yeah. for its crosswinds because I can take and nearly blow you off the road here. <laughs> out towards Jamison, they're going to have a turnaround point at the Delatite River, yeah. and they're going to come back the way they went out and uh, back to the base of Mount Buller. And uh, once they get there, it's going to be very tough because this climb is really uh, hell on the riders. Yeah. Uh, very steep grades, but no steeper than the finish up at the A-bomb where it reaches grades of up to 33%. Uh, and that's right on the finishing line. And the climb, by the way, itself is 16 kilometres long. All right, now this race is not based on time. It points the first eight riders to cross the line on both of the stages. So let's now join the action in the long distance road race. Where you go? <laughs> the rain, though, on top of the mountain. The roads are wet here, Phil, but at least the rain has stopped. It has stopped, but the roads are very slippery. In fact, coming to the start, several riders fell on the descent on that uh, treacherous descent down uh, Mount Buller. Now, immediately the race has gone out of the blocks here. The crosswinds, this is Alan Yaquani chasing one of the German riders down. And they've got right down to business here. Now, this is going to hurt a lot of riders because the wind whips across the Mansfield Mount Buller Road. Then they'll pick up a tailwind when they make the left turn down towards Jemison. Yeah, they're still in the valleys right now. But uh, as you say, as soon as it opened up, opens up into the fields there, it's going to be a ripping tower crosswind. Uh, but uh, I think a lot of riders weren't prepared for that fast start. Well, they're bunching up a little bit now. In fact, off our camera, Grisha Neerman has punctured the German rider, but he's got back into the group. And I think he's a bit lucky to have rejoined. He had a problem, apparently, with a saddle as well. That's Wayne Kestel leading the charge here. A lot of young man, men here willing to go. This is Duncan Smith of the White Pages VIS team as well. And you can see, by the way, the bunch is splitting. This is a group of about nine or ten riders here that Duncan Smith is pulling away. And these first uh, 30 kilometres are a little bit downhill. 
So a lot of riders uh, using that to the advantage, uh, attacking, getting away in, in uh, groups like this. Well, there's two riders made it from the Australian Institute of Sport. They're the riders in the blue jerseys there. The Victorian Institute of Sport have certainly Duncan Smith here. I don't see any of the German team in the breakaway, and this, in fact, is Tristan Prem, the man who is the best sprinter in the recent Skilled Engineering Bay Classic Series, and that's a real bad slice of luck because the race is under pressure. Henk Vogels, well, he's doing what he said he would do. He'd find out how he was going, and he's trying to get up here in the lead group. A good move, this couple of white pages riders there this is brett dennis the commonwealth games gold medalist in the team time trial and just look at the gap there's one or two struggled across here phil yeah the crosswinds are certainly uh coming across now and uh hank really looked like he'd been doing a good turn there it almost looked like he was in tears well he always does when he suffers hank he's had one win this year in his home city of perth but that was on a one hour circuit race and now this is the boy in the white helmet here is lars mikkelsen of denmark beginning to find his legs after a couple of weeks over here in Australia and a lot warmer weather, although he's leaving behind him now some nasty cloud on Bulla. Puncture, and it looks to me as though we've got Alan Yaquani in trouble. Yeah, these uh, roads here are particularly tough for the cyclists. They're a very uh, coarse metal surface, and uh, this time of year they resurface the roads and uh, is left leaving a lot of uh, pebbles and sharp rocks on the road. This is Preem coming back. Tristan coming back through the cars here. He's got his uh, work cut out for him because he's alone in these crosswinds. It's going to be very tough for him to get back. He's in big trouble, Phil, because look at the way the field is split up here as we're going down towards Mansfield. Just look at the gaps in the field. Now, Prima's has come back to the race convoy there, but he's going to latch on to what is left of the main field. He's an awful long way from the front of the race, and let's just have a look here. As we start to move forward to the leaders, just look at the gaps here. These are riders of Olympic caliber. They have really been caught out of the blocks today in those wins. A quick glimpse of Neil Stevens now gets to the front. This is Damien Foster, who's looking pretty active, and Glenn Mitchell of New Zealand going through. These riders are flat out, and this is a long way before we have to climb Mount Buller. This is uh, David McKenzie. Yeah, I tell you, it looks like that uh, group in the front, you've got the best of the best riding up there. They're going through and off moving very quickly. It's going to be uh, difficult for those boys on the back to get up. Well, there's a little group forming at the front. Jason Phillips here and Brendan Hart pushing the pace. The riders now heading out towards the left turn. They're going to pick up the tailwind and this race has been ripped apart. So as they make the turn, we'll take a break.